Today, my plan is to get the chicken coop finished and ready for the birds to go in and hopefully get the chickens put in there today because it's starting to get pretty chilly at night and even though the days are still nice for the most part, um, winter is fast approaching unfortunately. So I want to get these guys in there and also they're kind of due to start laying like any time now so I would like to get them in there so they can get accustomed to their nest boxes and their roosts and know that that's home. So I'm going to try and get that done today while my daughter's in school. So yeah, let's go. Let's get it done. One thing I have to keep in mind now that I'm putting the chickens out of their chicken tractor and into the run, we don't have our run covered. We've never had an issue with predators or aerial issues with our run being uncovered because we have it in the bush. So it's kind of surrounded by trees and I feel like it blocks their flight path. Also, we have livestock guardian dogs, so that helps a lot. Anyway, I'm gonna have to remember that I need to clip everybody's wings so that they can't fly over top. Today I am making the chickens a little roof type structure so they can go outside in the winter time or when it's raining or whatever and just get out of the elements because they can't go under the coop now. So first thing you need to know about farm building is that it does not need to be pretty. It does not need to be perfect. It doesn't matter as long as it's functional. So I just found some scrap wood and my plan is I'm going to build the back of the shelter first. I'm using a piece of tin off of a IBC plastic tote that came off. Okay, obviously I don't claim to be any sort of expert, so don't consider me any professional carpenter by any means. But I salvaged these screws from some boards I found that were left at our local garbage bins. Someone left free lumber. Heck yeah, I'm taking it. Um, had planned to take them out myself, but my brat of a grandpa came out last week and he took all the nails and screws out of the boards. I was going to do that, but he beat me to it. So anyways, I'm going to use these to build my structure. So easy, I'm just going to get out of here. Line up my boards somewhat. It, like I said, does not have to be perfect. Um, yeah, if you wanted to get fancier, you could probably drill some pilot holes first. Not doing that because I don't want to. They kind of seal it so moisture doesn't get in. Not that it really matters that much. I'm only using four of them. Don't tell my husband who you might cry because I know these are expensive. I'm gonna use this little ratchet. Don't judge me. I'm not the best ratchet operator. But this is what I'm gonna use to tighten her down. There's their little structure. 
is not perfect or fancy or beautiful, but whatever. Give them somewhere to hide and give them the shade if they want to come outside. Um, I originally wanted to make it angled, but you know what? I did not feel like making angled cuts. And without making angled cuts, it just didn't work. The front end would just lift up. So whatever, this will work if they go on top of it. I mean, whatever. I was trying to avoid getting poop on it on the top. I wanted it angled so they would slide off and not be able to land on it. So now they'll be able to land on it, but oh well, it is what it is. I am going to try to catch the chickens in the chicken tractor now and put them in a kennel so I can transport them over to the chicken coop. This might be interesting. I've probably officially scared all the chickens, so now I'm gonna have a heck of a time catching them. So we got two out of 25. I might have to go get some food and sprinkle it on the ground in there and see if that'll entice them. Is one of my favorites. I don't know if you can see her, but look at her pretty wings. She must have definitely Americana influence. Isn't she gorgeous? Look at those beautiful wings. She's got these, it's okay. She's got these pretty gray legs and a nice little pea comb. So less chance of frostbite. She's still so pretty. What a nice girl. Okay, I've got a few caught here. I'm gonna take these guys back to the coop and deal with them first, and then I'll come back and get another load. So I'm just gonna load them into my wagon behind the quad and slowly and as stress-free as possible make our way over there. I have got one of the hens here getting her ready to put in the coop. As I put them in, I'm just gonna clip their wings so that I don't forget anybody. This doesn't hurt them. Uh, so what you do is just these, these feathers right here, these are the ones you're gonna cut and you're not gonna cut them too short and you only wanna do it on one side because if you do it on both sides, they actually still have balance and can fly. So you wanna do it on one side in order to get them off balance. Nora loves chickens. Shut up, sweetheart. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do is just give her a little tiny haircut. There, so. Okay, that should be sufficient. She can investigate her new home. Obviously I want to keep my chickens in the chicken run where they belong, but one of the main reasons is this guy right there. I don't trust him with chickens yet, but this is going to be an excellent opportunity for me to do a bit more introduction to poultry with him with direct supervision. So he's just young, so we have to give him some grace there. All right, I'm back to go catch more. This time I'm going to use a fishnet because I think it's going to be a little easier. Okay, I managed to catch one more load of chickens. With the net, it would work a lot better. And I have one more left to do. So let's get these guys in the pooch. So this is another one that we got. Another pretty little Easter egg girl. She's very colorful. She's got some interesting patterns. 
on her. Here's another one of my favorites. She is just gorgeous. Look at her feathers on her back. Beautiful, beautiful pattern. I don't know exactly what breeds make up her lineage, but I'm guessing maybe Black Hopper Morans and some Americana possibly or Easter Egger. I'm not too sure, but she is very, very pretty. I think there's also a breed called a Partridge Chantecler. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but she seems like maybe that might be in her. She's very pretty too. Definitely uh, one of my favorites for sure. Let's see what her wings look like. Quite pretty. I'm allowed to be proud of my chickens. We opted for um, just kind of like a barnyard mix this time around. After we had our really bad luck with having ILT come through our flock and having to call everybody, we just decided to get back into chickens when we were ready, just basically for the enjoyment of it and for the eggs. So I'm not really interested in following, following uh, breed standards or soft or any of that. I just want to enjoy chickens and, and love them for who they are and not really care about if they look up to spec for their breed so and i think it's fun seeing all these barnyard mixed chickens and just what they hatch out to be and all the different variety i love unique looking animals isn't she pretty hey ready for your new house tell by the talkativeness this is a rooster he's fairly big um, I don't really like red roosters, they're not my favorite. Um, I think he's probably, the lady I got some chickens, chicken eggs from this spring that I hatched out, she said she had Rhode Island reds. And I know that they're amazing layers, they're just not my favorite, um, look of chicken. So, I actually really, really lucked out with this hatch, um, so I had set 51 eggs in the incubator. 26 of them hatched, which wasn't the best hatch rate, but out of all those eggs that hatched, I only got three roosters. That's like unheard of. I've never had that happen. So I have him and two other roosters to choose from. So we'll see. I don't know if I'll be keeping this guy or not. Check it out. New house. I'll bet you this one's an olive acre. Um, you can tell by the coloration that she probably has some black copper morans in her. She's got that coloring. Um, she has a single comb right here. That's kind of a mix between a single comb and a pea comb because it's, it's very short and it doesn't come all the way back down her head. And she has the Americana ear muffs. So I'll bet you anything that she's gonna lay green eggs. That's my hope. I love green eggs. They're so cool looking. And I don't know if you can see on camera, but she's got some really, really pretty metallic purpley colors with some like blue and orange even in there. That's really cool. Hopefully you can see that. Look at that. She can move her whole body and nod her head. She's a pretty girl. All my chickens are cool, of course, but I have another cool one to show you. This one looks like a calico cat. She's also probably an Easter Egger, Americana influence, and who knows what else, but she has so many different colors on her. She is so pretty. Look at her pretty wings. Isn't that nice? She's pretty. Show you a better view from here. Um, you can see all the colors in her feathers. Super pretty. Um, here's a better view of her wing. Funny thing is, when she hatched out, she was a white chick, so interesting to see how they develop.
that's it. Now the chicken tractor shall sit empty until next spring. One that is pretty much all black. She's got a little bit of white on her wing here. But she's got, I think, um, kind of like a fibro gene. So she's got the, the dark comb and wattles and skin, black legs, but not completely fibro. So I'll show you another one that is more so. Here's another one that's got a bit of a fibro gene also. I don't know if you can see in the comb how dark it is. It's not a bright red comb. It's got some black to it, black beak, um, black legs. But it's definitely a cross because um, there's some rust spots throughout her, but she's still very pretty. And I think that she has, um, I think it's called Sfarthona um, influence. So they lay a white egg but the chicken themselves is very dark. Here's one of the other roosters I'm considering keeping. Um, I think I'm gonna keep two roosters, so it's just a matter of picking which ones I'd like to keep. He's very beautiful coloring, um, but my goal was I hatched out some black copper morans, and I don't know if I really got a black copper morans rooster. If I did, I don't think he's pure. It might be a crossbred because I wanted to get some olive eggs out of the next generation. And this guy is not gonna give me the genes that I want for that. So he will probably give off some like blue, greens, maybe some pink genes, which is just gonna kind of create a muddled mess of a rainbow assortment of colors. So we'll see, um, he is very pretty. He doesn't seem to really have a tail there. Not much of a tail. Um, not sure if he just doesn't grow one or what. You can kind of see some feathers starting to kind of come so I don't know if he's just not got a tail or if somebody's been pecking his feathers out on his bum. I don't know. But he's a pretty boy. And again he was a white chick as well when he was hatched out so that's interesting. Here's a hen that gave me a run for my money for the longest time. I could not figure out if this was a rooster or a hen, but it is a hen. I have seen her get bred, <laughs> so it's, it, it's a girl, but she's probably an olive eager. She's cool. She's one of the only ones that hatched out with this little crest of feathers on her head, so that makes her unique for sure. Um, definitely think there's some black copper morans in her breeding. She's got the fluffy legs and uh, a funny variation of a single comb. So I think she'll probably lay all of eggs. That's what I'm guessing. Chicken genetics are quite fascinating. Out of the few black copper morans eggs that actually did hatch out, um, I think this might be one of them. She's a bigger body chicken than some of the other ones. She's definitely heavier, more meatier. She's got a really, really nice coloring. Um, she does have, it's hard to tell, but she does have some feathers on her feet. They're just not super long, but she's very pretty. So I'm expecting her to lay those nice dark chocolate colored eggs. So we shall see. Okay, here's a much better example of that fibro gene I'm talking about. And fibro just means it's dark. Um, they get the black skin, black beak, black feathers, black wattles, and black comb. So you can tell, I don't know if you can see that, but very dark comb, very dark wattles, and dark legs. And I will try to show you, if you flip her over, she should have black skin as well. So she does, you can see that there. She's got dark skin also. Pretty cool. Here's the rooster I am also considering keeping. He's either a black copper moran purebred or a crossbred, one of the two. I'm hoping that he has the dark brown egg genetics that he can pass on to his offspring so we'll keep him around for sure he's got the fluffy legs 
the single comb, the wattles. He looks like a black poplar moran, just not as nicely marked as a purebred should be if he was a purebred, so we'll see. <laughs> very last hen, very last chicken going in there. So we will quickly give her a little haircut and she can go. All right, so everybody's in the coop. Um, in case you're wondering, they are not going to be stuck on the side. I have a second side of the coop that will be open to them here shortly. I just want them to get accustomed to it first and then I will let them outside so they can come and go and get some water.